There we go. Galatians 4, 9, 30, verse 4. So, uh, as I say, this is the third message in our series on Galatians 4, 4 to 7, adoption of sons. And the first message was on verse 4, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. God had a particular time for Jesus Christ to come, and he came at the exact time that God had planned. And uh, God told us exactly when Jesus would come. What book in the Bible does anybody remember? Daniel 9 tells us about uh, 70 weeks were determined upon God's people, and these were weeks of years, so it was 490 years, but the last year, the last week, is the tribulation period. So, uh, 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 so 483 years after the command to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, the Messiah would come. God has a time, and uh, we need to understand that. So we looked at that, and then we saw that uh, God sent his son. Uh, there's false teaching that Jesus is a created being. Well, Jesus had to exist before his incarnation, that is, where before he came flesh, because God couldn't send somebody that wasn't there. Right? So... Um, he, he already exists. And, uh, and then it says, uh, made of a woman, made under the law. We saw that Jesus Christ had to become a, a human being because he couldn't die for our sins unless he became a human being. And uh, made of a woman shows uh, 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 something important that I didn't really cover as well as I could have, uh, the virgin birth. I could have covered a lot more in that, uh, in, in hindsight. Uh, and then made under the law, Jesus fulfilled the law 100%. Then the next sermon was to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. We saw to redeem was to purchase for freemen by equivalent price. And uh, the only thing that could pay for your sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that God would accept uh, because uh, Jesus is infinite and uh, uh, the sins of the world are, are, are so many, but Jesus died. He paid the pr pr price uh, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And that was the wonderful thing that when, when you trust Jesus Christ, God adopts you. So I want us to continue on now um, and... Uh, Verse 6, and we'll look at that. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. What a tremendous passage. Uh, and we're going to see this morning the work of the Holy Spirit. So verse 4 says, and because ye are sons. It links back to the previous verse. To redeem them that are under the law that you might receive the adoption of sons. God tells us that when, when we're saved, we are adopted, and then he repeats it and says, because you are sons. So we're adopted, and then what, what happens because we're adopted? Well, because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. We are redeemed the, by the blood of the, the lamb, and we become sons. The Bible says in, in uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 18, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. God, when you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, becomes your father. <coughs> and that, <coughs> excuse me, is we receive him by faith. Galatians chapter 3. Look at verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So you're not born a child of God. You're born again a child of God. When you receive Jesus Christ by faith, you receive him for who he is. God the Son that died on the cross for your sins. And that's what you receive. Uh, you receive him and be saved. It's a birth. Bible tells us how to receive him in John 1. 
but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which are born, not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. So that birth is a spiritual birth. And I, I want to read you John Gill. I, I love what he says here. But uh, it is more to be a child of God than to be redeemed, pardoned, and justified. It is great grace to redeem from slavery, pardon criminals, and justify the ungodly. But it is another higher act of grace to make them sons, which makes them infinitely more honorable than to be the sons and daughters of the greatest potentate on earth. Think about what he said there, and, and I, I, he said it so well. It's one thing to be pardoned. That's a wonderful thing to be pardoned, isn't it? I got saved. When I got saved, I got pardoned. I got justified. I got redeemed. But God says, I did something even greater for you. I made you my child. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. And God doesn't leave us guess about this. You know, I'll, I'll talk about this later, but it's such a wonderful thing to be a child of God. The, the religions of the world don't have a loving God. Like if you study the Muslim religion, you'll not find Allah as a father figure. You'll not find Allah in love. You'll find him as justice and, and, and vengeance. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a big difference between the God, the true and living God, the God of the Bible, and the God of this world. But God didn't leave us guess about this. It says, And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Now notice, it's a capital S in verse 6. That's God, the Holy Spirit. God, the Father, and God, the Son, sent the Holy Spirit. Jesus couldn't stay on earth. He... he he had, he had risen, and, and, and it was time for him to go to heaven, but he sent the Holy Spirit. In uh, John 14, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. And so Jesus said he was leaving and he was going to send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, as I've taught you many times, in the Old Testament would come upon people. But after we were redeemed and adopted and, and, and become the child of God uh, in the New Testament, we're indwelt by the Holy Spirit. And there's people that falsely teach that you get saved and then some time later in life when, you, when you've when dedicated yourself enough and the Holy Spirit indwells you. That's not at all what happens. Let me ask you a question. When a baby's born, do they do all these good deeds and then finally you recognize them as your child? What happens? The baby's born, you pick it up and you've got all that love for that child, right? That's just the way it is. You don't do anything to receive the Holy Spirit. He, he dwells in you because you are a what? A child, a son of God. Uh, and because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. He sent the Holy Spirit not because what you did. Does it say because of what you did? What does it say? Because what? Because he's your father. Because ye are sons. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing. God will never leave you nor forsake you. And um, Jesus knew it was going to be a difficult place for Christians. And he sent the comforter. God the Father sent the Spirit of God. And God the Son sent the Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit came willingly. They worked Together, I want to read you this quote. Uh, some people think that 
God the Father is here, God the Son's here, and God the Holy Spirit is here. And uh, um, that's not the case. Let me read you this. That the Holy Spirit proceeds both from the Father and the Son, for He is the Spirit of the Son and is sent by the Father. There is order among the divine persons, though no priority of being. There is order, but no priority of being. So uh, people uh, misunderstand, and because Jesus called God the, his Father, that didn't change the fact that he's God. Because God the Father calls Jesus Christ God in Hebrews. So uh, the, the Holy Spirit, because he is sent, is no less God the Holy Spirit. You understand? He is equal with the Father and with the Son. But the Spirit was sent for us to be a comforter uh, and, and some uh, other things that I'll talk about. But the Holy Spirit has this, this work in us that he's going to, to make us Christ-like. And because, you know, um, when a uh, child is first born, they don't really act like their parents much, do they? Right? They act like a baby. But as they grow up, you'll find, oh, those kids are kind of like their parents. Well, as I grow in the Lord, by the help of the Holy Spirit, I become more Christ-like. He's called the Spirit of his son. Uh, because your son's God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. It's the spirit of the son because uh, it's the same spirit that worked through the son uh, and that will work in us. If you do not have the Holy Spirit, you're not a child of God. Everybody that's a son of God, a child of God, gets the Spirit of God, right? Look at it. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. It, it's because you're a son. And this is so important because uh, like, there's many Christian religions out there saying you get the Holy Spirit sometime later in life. And, and you don't. You're, you're a child of God. It's, it's, it's dependent upon you being a child of God and nothing else. Uh, the Bible says this, listen, but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If you don't have the spirit of Christ, you're none of his. What's that mean? You're not his. You're not, you're not a child of God. Listen, it, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. You are a child of God. And because you're a child of God, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, and I'll talk about this, uh, you never really got saved. There's people that can, can say, well, I, I asked the Lord to save me. But did you, did you mean it from your heart? You see, there's people that ask God to save them because they don't want to go to hell. And, and that is true. But it's more than that. It's, it's receiving him as your savior. Not something, well, I'll, I'll get saved and I'll just do what I want. And, and No, it's, it's, it's from the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Uh, let me read you the Geneva Bible notes. Geneva Bible was an English uh, translation. Uh, I can't remember the year, uh, but it was before the King James Bible. Um, but they had notes in it. And this is the note. The Holy Spirit, who is both of the Father and of the Son. But there is a special reason why it's called the Spirit of the Son. That is because the Holy Spirit seals up our adoption in Christ and gives us full assurance of it. Now, I, I, I thought this was very interesting. And because ye are sons, God sent, hath sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Where did he send the, the Spirit into your what? What does it say? Where does the Holy Spirit dwell? In what? Well, no. And because you are sons, God hath forth, sent forth the Spirit of the Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Where? Into your hearts. Not into your head, but into your heart. See, God cares about the heart. 
I don't know what that happened there. Phone just made a noise. Uh, God sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Uh, it's not a, a brain thing. Uh, Christianity is not the smartest person to be closest to God. It's about the heart. What's your heart? Uh, the, the, the smartest person is no better Christian because he's smart. It's about the heart. And uh, I, I, I put this down, and, and uh, the Lord gave it to me. But not in the brains only have knowledge, but in the heart, so we can have a loving, living relationship with Him. Amen? That's what God wants with us. Uh, he wants us to have that loving, living relationship with Him. Because we are the temple of God. And uh, Romans 8, verse 15 and 16 says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And I'm going to talk about that in, in, in a minute, minute. But we receive the spirit because we are adopted, because we become a child of God. We didn't do anything to receive the Holy Spirit. He just came and dwelt in our heart because that's that's what we get. Uh, uh, sometimes I don't know if you ever bought something and, and you realized, oh, I've got more than I thought. Well, that's what happens when you get saved. You get a whole lot more than you ever imagined. I thought when I got saved, okay, I'll just get my sins forgiven in my uh, home in heaven. But I got far, far more. I, I got redeemed. I got saved. I got the Holy Spirit dwelling in me to help me live for him. The Bible says that that Holy Spirit, when he dwells in you, seals you. Uh, you are sealed, and the seal is, is, is to protect you. That You can't lose your salvation because God dwells in you. And you're sealed unto the day of redemption. Uh, let me read you Ephesians 1, verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, God calls it an earnest. Uh, the Holy Spirit is an earnest. An earnest is something given in, in down payment of a, a, a promise. For example... Uh, you're going to get married, and, and you give uh, your, your wife to be a, a uh, engagement ring. What is that? That's an earnest. That's a, something saying, I'm going to keep my promise. Well, the promise for me is that I'm going to have a home in heaven. I'm going to get a new body. Well, what's the earnest? The Holy Spirit in me. Um, first, 2 Corinthians 1.22 who also have <laughs> sealed us and given us the earnest of his spirit in our hearts. God changes us. He puts the Holy Spirit in our hearts. When I got saved, I gave up a lot of sins that I was doing. I didn't um, think I got to change this and I got to change that and I got to change these things. God just was in my heart. And, and I had a heart for God now, and I didn't have a heart for some of the things that I was doing before because God changed me. So, um, and because you are sons, God sent the, forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Abba is like Papa or Daddy and Father. It's the same thing. He says it twice. Why, why, why twice? To emphasize it so that you get it. Listen, there's no other religion in the world besides uh, Christianity and then Judaism before that where God is your father. What a tremendous thing. I mean, this is this is uh, cr uh, crazy good. I don't, I don't have words to describe it. God is my father and the Holy Spirit it dwells in me. Uh, and, 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 and the Spirit cries in my heart, 
Abba, Father, the Holy Spirit is in my heart telling me, you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. God is your Father. And it's the Spirit telling me. Uh, Romans, take your Bible, Keep. we'll go back to Galatians, but just uh, go to Romans chapter 8. I'll get that for you. Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. Tremendous verses. Uh, we're going to read verses 15 and 16. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. When I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior, the Holy Spirit dwelt in me, and he cries out, God, your Father now. And it's tremendous. Now, I've... When I prepare sermons, I spend hours studying. And, and uh, as I was studying, I... Listen, books are great. Books written by Christians are great, but they all have mistakes in them, okay? I make mistakes. Uh, everything I say up here is not right. You check it with the Word of God. But anyways, uh, I read uh, Abba. I read it was a Hebrew, originally a Hebrew word. I read originally it was an Aramaic word. I read it was originally a Syriac word. I don't know. I think, uh, I don't know which language first had it, but it, it's, they're all saying the same thing, though. Abba is Papa, Daddy. Like, uh, my children call me Dad. They don't usually call me Father. Uh, I don't think they really ever call me Father. They call me Dad. What, what's Dad? It's a term of endearment, isn't it? Whereas Father is... A term of what? Word starting in R. Reverence. Go ahead. Reverence. Reverence, yeah. I was thinking relationship. Okay, so there's two here. We've got the term of endearment or love, Abba, and the term of relationship, Father. He's both, eh, amen? He, he is, he's, he, uh, he's a loving, godly father. And that's the thing. Uh, as I said before, you can study the world religions. You don't find this <coughs> there. <coughs> we have a, <coughs> a wonderful relationship with father, God. And that's exactly what Jesus prayed in the garden. Mark 14, verse 36. And he said, Abba. Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. And so uh, that, that's exactly how God the Son spoke to the Father. He says, Abba, Papa, Daddy, Father, the relationship. Um, <clears throat> now, the Spirit cries out that you are a child of God. I want to read you this quote here. The force of the argument seems to lie in this, that as he who has the spirit of man in him, of a man in him, has the evidence that he is the son of man. So I have the spirit of man. I act like a man. I talk like a man. Therefore, I'm a human being, right? So he that hath the spirit of God has thereby assurance that he is the son of God. It was not allowed among slaves uh, uh, to slaves among the Jews to use the title Abba, Father, addressing the matter, master of the family to which it was belonged, or to the correspondent title, Emma, Mother, when he was speaking to the mistress. Uh, you have no right to call God Abba, Father, till you have been adopted by God. I don't go around calling other people uh, Dad. I, I, have, I have one dad. I call my dad, Dad. Because I'm his son. And God has given in my heart the Holy Spirit. And he just cries, Abba, Father. <clears throat> I can't explain it, but once I got saved, I knew God was my father. You know, you know why? 
because the Holy Spirit was in there saying, God's your father. And it's a wonderful thing. And, and we call him father. It, it's a relationship by birth. Not physical birth, but spiritual birth. Jesus said, ye must be born again. In the summer of 1977, I was born again. The Holy Spirit indwelt me. And now I am a child of God. And the Holy Spirit witnesses to my spirit that I am a child of God. Uh, as I said, other religions study them out. You don't find uh, this. They don't believe it. Abba, uh, sorry, Allah is an autocrat. He, he, he's a, he, he, there's no uh, loving father relationship. Uh, and I was listening to a book and it's talking about the offerings given to these different gods and, 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 and they were always wanting justice, justice. And God does care about justice. But God is more than just a just God. He's a loving, kind, gentle God. And <clears throat> understand this. As I said, it's not in our head, but in our heart that Holy Spirit dwells. And he wants to work in our heart to draw us closer to him. But he, he works through obedience. He works through fa uh, faith. Uh, he, he, he draws us close to him in prayer and in your Bible reading and the preaching of the word of God and singing hymns. And, and, and that's the way he works. But he's a, a wonderful God. He's Abba, Father. A relationship of love, gentleness, kindness, but also justice. God, listen, God is not weak because he is gentle and kind. He's still all suffering. But he's a wonderful God. He's And the Holy Spirit is in my heart crying, Abba, Father. What a wonderful thing <clears throat> that God lets us know. It would be a terrible thing if you didn't know you were saved. And uh, let me say this. Uh, the, Roman, the Roman Catholic Church is, is, is so far from, from the Bible. The Roman Catholic Church says you can't know that you're saved. And if you say that you know for sure that you're a child of God, you know what it says? Let you be anathema. Let you be cursed. Because it's a rejection of, of, of the truth that the Holy Spirit is the uh, is indwelt the believer. Uh, let me just read you a, a couple of anathemas here. If everyone, if anyone saith, uh, this is from the Second Council of Trent. If anyone saith that justifying faith is nothing else but the confidence in the divine mercy which remits sins for Christ's sake, or that confidence alone is this whereby we are justified, let him be anathema. So if you believe that you're just saved by grace through faith, he says, let him be cursed. Uh, if anyone saith that justice received is not preserved and increased before God through good works, if you say you don't increase in, in, in your justification with God, but that the works are merely fruit and sign of justification, let them, and not a cause of the increase thereof, let them be anathema. So they're saying that works, uh, if, you, if you say works don't help you to get saved, let you be anathema. You see, that's what the devil wants people to believe. The devil doesn't want you to know that God is your loving father. And the Holy Spirit is in, in you crying, Abba, Father, crying out, you're, God's your dad, God's your father, he loves you. That's a wonderful thing to know. And then the Holy Spirit also, though, is there empowering you to live for God. Uh, the Bible says that... Uh, when you got saved, the Holy Spirit indwelled you and, and gives you the power to tell others about Christ. Uh, in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, but, when ye shall, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. The Holy Spirit is there uh, helping me to serve God and drawing me closer to God. The Bible says in John 16, 13, Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The Holy Spirit is in me, drawing me to truth. What's truth? 
Thy word is truth. The Holy Spirit opens up the word of God to me. Um, <clears throat> I told you this before, but my father is a very smart man. Uh, um, in, he didn't finish secondary school uh, till later in life. He, he finished it, and then uh, he c continued studying in India. He ended up being... Um, working with scientists in NASA and, and set up a satellite tracking and identification unit. That was way back in the 70s, and that was a major thing. Set the first one up in Canada. A, a really smart man. And I'm reading my Bible, and my dad says, what's that mean? I thought, this is strange. My dad's so smart, and he, and he doesn't understand what that means? Why didn't he understand what that meant? And why could I understand it? So I explained it to him. Why? Because I was saved. I had the Spirit of God dwelling in me. He didn't have the Spirit of God dwelling in him, showing him the truth. He is saved now, praise the Lord, but he, did, he wasn't then. And so it's a, such a wonderful thing to know. Because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. What a wonderful, wonderful blessing to know God as your Savior. If you don't know him, I'd love to show you from the Bible how you can know Jesus Christ.